Okay, Oga, okay. okay. you say what's make you vote in Ogun? Now three things. Uh, no, no, one. Me now. Mm -hmm. First of all, I look say this man, an okay. old man. Okay. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Lassif Jawda Abiyodun. Okay. Because I am a supplier. Okay. Since this man entered this government now, mm -hmm. there is no work again. I have my car. No, why do you make you support that? I'm still coming. I'm, I'm coming. Give me the three reasons why okay. you vote in Ogun. Now you take a the sweat. Yes, now okay, when people support Tinubu first, they, mm -hmm. I don't look this man, say this man don't hold. Okay. As he don't hold like this, there's like nothing where this man what nothing where this man want again for this life. He no need money again. He no need money okay, again. I'm not expecting family. that old age okay. to still come back and still look this our money. Okay. I supported you say he's already acquired everything from this world. So he's going there to Yes, now say he's going to fix this country. Good. That's number one. Number one. Secondly. Number I voted for him and I supported him because of say okay because the man is educated, he's not a military. He's educated. Yes, now don't forget oh, okay, about okay, okay. Let me, let, let what me I finished for University of Chicago. Chicago okay. Uh, okay, educated, he's not military. He's yes, a democrat. He's democrat. Good. So no I know I you know how to fix this this country. country. Perfect. Number three. Number three mm. is because Tinubu, he has been with this government. He was a PA to Abiola. Uh -huh. So I thought he know the problem of this country. The reason, the magic. Reason. No, it's not magic. You go fix that. He's going to fix it. He get good intention. He get good, good intention because okay. because yes, the ambition is very high. Then. Okay. But he made not this man. I I already be now. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you not a Nigerian? Why are you not driving? I think you get moto now. Yes, of course now. But why are you why we take I'm just going to pick something in Nigeria here. If I drive my car from Aja to uh, from uh, Badole to Aja here, uh -huh. I will spend 10,000 halfway. But every man who here like this, you just, just cost me like 1,000. <laughs> <laughs> Life is so easy. This is what they say you will learn. You will learn in the hard way. I'm not traveling, you know. Are, not... le are you learning? Yes. Three boots come out, have you no scam out? Ah, this scam. No, now I scam because I have a Peter Obi. Uh, even though you are Peter Obi, even though Peter Obi come there, I don't, you don't know, don't judge anybody. I go judge uh, based on of what Peter Obi don't do when he was do? governor. No, I'm not talking about, don't, let, don't, let, let's forget about the, the maybe party or no party. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> we love that. Whenever we want to talk about bad government in this country and how Nigeria has retrogressed badly, many people tend to look at the politicians that have held political offices for not doing their work. But I want to tell you that majority of the problem we are having in this country is being contributed by the citizens. Nigerian citizens are the biggest problem we have in this country. You need to understand that even the politicians are citizens of this country. Whatever you have at the political landscape is a reflection of what we have in the citizens. From this little conversation, you can definitely deduce the thinking pattern of an average Nigerian whenever they want to vote for their leader. Let us analyze everything that that young man said and you are going to see the problem inherent in every mind of Nigerians whenever it comes to voting. Number one, he said that Tinibu is an old man, he has achieved whatever he wants to achieve, hence he will not loot the country. I don't know how he came to that stupid conclusion, but it just shows you the emptiness of an average Nigeria when it comes to decision making in politics. Don't look at that young man as a single person, he represents millions of Nigerians out there when it comes to election making decision. If you are sensible during the last election, you will notice that it was a clear case of choosing between the good and the evil. In previous election, it was a case of choosing between the evil and the lesser evil. One man stood out in that election campaign in terms of laying bare the problem of this country and the solution to this country. He tore all the width and breadth of this country, explaining even to the tiniest details the problem in this country and how he intend to fix it. He equally told the people about his track record, his competency and his character. 
It was visible to the blind that Peter Obi was the best shot to the presidency. It was clear that Mr. Peter Obi is the one that Nigeria need at this moment. Someone that is frugal. Someone that will cut down the cost of governance. But yet, somebody like this guy who is representing millions of other Nigerians out there decided in their tiniest of mind that Tinibu is the best shot for this country. He claimed that Tinibu has been in government and as such, he will know the problem of this country. Good and fine, it shows that this man knows Tinibu's antecedent. What is Tinibu's antecedent as a governor in Lagos, raising the IGR of Lagos? That is all Tinibu brags about. But because most people are not enlightened in this country, they fail to understand that raising the IGR is not synonymous with development. Whenever I hear people say that I raise the IGR, it simply means that they've taxed the people to death. They've collected more money from the people than they've given more money to the people. That is all what Tinibu was all about. And of course, you need to understand that the period when Tinibu became the governor in Lagos State, Nigeria was experiencing economic boom under President Olusegu Obasanjo administration. Lagos State being Nigeria's foremost capital has majority of the federal government infrastructure the seaport, the international airport, and major federal government institutions made it possible for different companies and organizations to go to Lagos and site their headquarters. Even oil companies that were drilling oil in Niger Delta cited their headquarters in Lagos. This is because the key government infrastructures and institutions in Lagos make it conducive for businesses to thrive. Most of these businesses had to pay taxes to the Lagos state government. Tinibu as a governor then benefited usually from this. This is how Tinibu was able to raise Lagos State's IGRU. It has nothing to do with his leadership quality. To date, other Lagos State governors that emerged after Bola Mer Tinibu have been able to do more than Bola Mer Tinibu as governors in Lagos State, despite running Lagos State as a private entity. And of course, the government in Lagos State is being controlled by Bola Mer Tinibu. So using Lagos State as a litmus test for Bola Mer Tinibu leadership quality is a recipe for disaster. It was obvious from the onset that Bola Mer Tinibu was not the right choice for Nigerians. The guy that is speaking could not even mention one problem that Bola Mer Tinibu explained to Nigerians and how he was going to solve it. Bola Mer Tinibu did not even debate his policies. Bola Mer Tinibu did not even defend his manifestos. But yet, someone like this man voted for Bola Mer Tinibu because he feels he has the magic wand to solve Nigerian problem. How can you solve a problem you don't understand? Being in a government environment does not make you to understand the problem in this country. This guy neglected someone like Peter Ruby that explained everything in this country, that explained how he was going to fix his country, that even gave Nigerians his track record as a governor in Anambra State, the problem he met on ground, and how he was able to solve it. What is even more worrying is the fact that this guy has a car, according to him, but he left it at home and he chose to board Keke to go to where he's going because he's going to spend more. This is how most Nigerians adjust to the suffering and poverty in the land rather than holding their government accountable to fix the problem they've created. This young man represents millions of Nigerians out there. Everybody is so calm. Things are very expensive. They are not agitating the same way they agitated on that good luck, Ebele Jonathan. Good luck, Ebele Jonathan removed the fuel subsidy and fuel was being sold for 160 naira. They protested against him. They shut down Lagos. They shut down support in this country. But now, fuel is being sold for 1,002 to 1,300 naira and everybody is adjusting. People are going about their normal businesses as if everything is okay. Another thing we should even be asking ourselves is, fuel subsidy was removed, was gas subsidy equally removed? Why is gas so expensive in this country? Gas is a byproduct from what we get from crude oil. It's more like a waste product. Why is cooking gas expensive in this country? The guy that was interviewing him told him that he's a P2B supporter and he tried to brush that aside. To this man, nobody can fix Nigeria. That is the problem with most Nigerians. Most Nigerians are so used to bad leadership that they don't know, even know what a good leadership is all about. They feel everybody is corrupt, they feel everybody is incompetent when they vote someone like President Muhammad Ubari that do not even understand what leadership is all about, that do not even understand what economy is all about. He came on board, destroyed the third fastest growing economy in the world, destroyed the biggest economy in Africa, they think everybody is like Buhari. Having trusted Bola Metinibu with power, and Bola Metinibu has continued in that same trajectory. They think that everybody is like Bola Metinibu, everybody is not like Bola Metinibu. 
During the election campaign, it was clear that Bolami and Tinubu was a waiting disaster. But since you have millions of Nigerians out there who are thinking like this guy, people who have failed to use their brain, people who have been rational in their political decision making, you will always end up with someone like Bolami and Tinubu and President Muhammadu Buhari. But it's rather so unfortunate because this guy represents millions of Nigerians out there that are making political decisions for you, that are deciding who becomes your president, that are deciding your political future. In deciding your political future, they are equally deciding your life. They are deciding the future of this country. Look at where we are today. It is because we have people like these guys who have failed to use their brain, who have failed to be rational in their thinking, who have failed to make informed political decisions, who are voting based on tribalism, based on ethnicity, based on compensation, rather than based on merit, competence, and characters we can trust. And as long as we keep having people like these guys out there, we are not going out of this quagmire anytime soon. We will never elect a good leader that will fix this country. Going forward, I think it's high time we stop leaving our political decision to people that just turned 18 years of age. We should set stricter measures to anyone that wants to vote. Before anyone is given a voter's card in this country, the person should be put through a cognitive test. Questions or exams should be tested to test the person's rational ability to make politically informed decisions. We can't continue to leave something as important as election that defines the future of this country into the hands of people that do not know their left and right, into the hands of people that think through their enemies. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.